this is this is really the first well I guess this is the first Sunday that I just came in this morning and I just said fall is in the air uh, very aware that uh, this next week is going to be a very spirited week for this community as uh, it prepares for homecoming my kids are already telling me of all, all the different ways that they they are supposed to dress for for school uh, uh, to, to bring in the school pride so um, uh, we are a church, uh, not only uh, of Christ, but we, uh, we we serve the community and we celebrate with what happens in the community. And this is a big week uh, for this community. So um, <clears throat> as homecoming comes uh, uh, this coming Friday, uh, I, I the announcement that was put here today, I, I'm going to have Craig make this announcement, but the, w- the windows are in. It, the windows are in, and uh, do you want to say more about what's yeah. what's going to happen? So they're tentatively beginning uh, replacing the windows starting tomorrow, depending on the weather. Um, you'll notice some different things going on around. Please excuse uh, the mess. I know that Keith and uh, his workers will try to keep things as cleanly as possible around here. However, they will be using uh, this west parking lot as a staging area, so his trailer and the windows will be stored here, um, probably here in this gravel area. As I talked with Joel, so. Project. I think they're figuring two to three weeks on the project, if I remember correctly. But with the weather, I'm guessing that you know it's going to go longer than that. And um, and so you'll notice the stained, window, stained glass windows. I think are one of the first things that are supposed to come out, so that they can get refurbished and then inserted into the new frames and everything. So please be patient as the uh, construction you know goes along. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to contact Carl or Joel. <laughs> In short, th- there will be uh, some adjustments be having to make within the next month, and some of them you might uh, discover next week that the stained glass will be gone. But it's rest assured, it's in a safe place, being cleaned, and uh, cr- uh, there's some cracks in them that they're gonna they're gonna fix. So, would there be any other announcements from the community? If not, uh, let's prepare our hearts for worship. We continue our service in confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the one who fashions us, the one who heals us, the one who reforms us again and again. Let us confess our sin, calling for God's transforming power. Source of all life. Right, and the word is just. 
God hears our cries and sends the Spirit to change us and to empower our lives in the world. Our sins are forgiven. God's love is unconditional, and we are raised up as God's people who will always be made new in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God, glory to God, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of your Father. Receive our Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God, glory to God, and peace to God's people on earth. You alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Most High. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. God, glory to God in the highest, glory to God, glory to God, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord be with you. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Generous God, your Son, made us life, and we might come to peace with you. Give us the share of your spirit, and grant us the grace of
A reading from the book of Numbers, the 11th chapter. The rabble among them had a strong craving, and the Israelites also wept again and said, If only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt, for nothing the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up, and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, all at the entrances of their tents. Then the Lord became very angry, and Moses was displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, Why have you treated your servant so badly? Why have I not found favor in your sight? And you lay the burden of all these people on me. Did I conceive all this people? Did I give birth to them that you should say to me, carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a sucking child and to the land that you promised an oath to their <coughs> ancestors? Where am I to get meat to give to all these people? For they come weeping to me and say, give us meat to eat. Am I not able to carry all this people alone? For they are too heavy for me. If this is the way you are going to treat me, put me to death at once. If I have found favor in your sight, and do not let me see my misery. So the Lord said to Moses, Gather for me seventy of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the leaders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tent of the meeting, and have them take their place there with you. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered 70 elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him, and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it in on the 70 elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. The word of the Lord. A reading from the book of James, the fifth chapter. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick. And the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another, and pray for one another, so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months it did not rain on earth. And then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if anyone among you wanders from the truth 
and is brought back by you, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. The word of the Lord. gospel comes to us from St. Mark, the ninth chapter. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus says, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterwards to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against me uh, us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great milestone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life named than to have two hands and go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than have two eyes and be thrown into hell, where their worm, worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good. But if the salt has lost its saltiness, how can you, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Every so often, I, I get into these reflective rants, stuff that gets in my head, uh, and a word or a topic uh, that I just cannot stop thinking about until I find a quiet place all by myself to jot down, to explore, to think, to feel, and to allow my imagination run wild. It all started after a painful paper cut. I applied that, uh, uh, that sterilizing water solution before you know, before you put the bandage on, you know, that uh, the, the stuff that comes in the brown bottle. And when you put it over your wound, it bubbles up and stings, and it hurts. And I was always told that, that hurt was good, because uh, that way I know that my uh, exposed cut was being sanitized, and it was getting ready to be healed. Now I looked at the formula on the back, of that bottle and saw that a big part of the solution was made with water-based salt water and dioxide solution. Uh, so this was the onset of my reflection for our gospel lesson this morning, particularly around verse 50. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. That same day uh, of treated, uh, a treated paper cut with salt water and the bubbling and the pain with the sanitation and the exposure 
from the salt solution to my wound and to the healing process, somehow the word vulnerable came up. Uh, so the, question the questions naturally came to my focused, ranting reflection were, are you vulnerable? Are you too vulnerable? Uh, I, I had someone recently tell me that, uh, you know, Pastor, I don't want to be vulnerable anymore. I don't, I don't want to feel anymore. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to let myself become vulnerable anymore. Uh, I'm not going to let myself feel anymore. Because it hurts too much. It demands too much. It's exhausting. And it takes a lot out of me. And it does. Uh, they are right. Uh, being vulnerable does hurt, and it demands a lot. It's exhausting, and it takes a lot out of you. When one is vulnerable to other people, and you allow yourselves to be open, uh, you allow yourselves to be exposed to people's feelings, and it does hurt. And it, de it does demand a lot. And the aftermath of the, of the opening up of yourself is to feel. It is, and it is very difficult uh, to deal with that sometimes. You are sad when they are sad. You are happy when they are happy. You are troubled when they are troubled. Their pain is your pain. You want the best for them. But it does not always happen. Being vulnerable does demand a lot. Maybe too much sometimes. At least it seems that way. It demands caring, it demands helping, it demands commitment, it demands time, and sometimes it leaves little time for oneself. Uh, sometimes it seems to leave you empty inside and tired inside, and you want to run away and, and you want to run away from being vulnerable. We need to hide once in a while, to go away by ourselves, to be alone like Jesus did to watch the sunset, to sit on the beach, to pray and to read, to be restored, to be renewed, revived, to be in touch with our humanness, our reality, our personhood, and our being, our own feelings. We need to love ourselves too, and we also need to let other people love us. We need to go away sometimes, but not run away. If we run away, then we run away from our real being, our real humanness, our real aliveness, our real creation. Now in scripture it says that God was happy uh, and God was also was sorry and God grieved. God was angry at times and jealous and God loved. That Jesus wept, Jesus had compassion, Jesus was angry, he loved, Jesus grieved, Jesus was sorry, and Jesus forgave. The Almighty God has feelings, it says. Uh, God's Son has feelings, it says. God is, God is vulnerable. Jesus is vulnerable. If God wasn't, if God isn't, there would be no need for the cross. There would be no need for forgiveness. There would be no need for new beginnings, no starting over, no new life, no salvation. We are created in God's image, it says, uh, and we are asked to be, uh, to be the imitation of God. In Genesis, it reads, God blew into us the breath of life and we become living beings. Being vulnerable is being a living being. The text says in our gospel lesson this morning, if salt loses its saltiness, what good is it? Now the basic reason for salt in the time of Jesus was to preserve or cleanse. Another reason for salt was for seasoning or enrichment. So if salt loses its saltiness, its reason, its being, 
what good is it? It can't help preserve anymore. It can't help enrich anymore. It only just exists. When a person loses their live living beingness, runs away from their humanness, their, their vulnerability, their feelings, their reason, their creation, what good are they? They can't help preserve anymore. They don't help enrich anymore. They just exist unto themselves. Then our text uh, closes at the very last line uh, with a statement, have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. Having feelings for one another, being honestly vulnerable, being in touch with your uh, living beingness, your creation, your yourself as a child of a living God and a God's son, Jesus, who was vulnerable even to the point of death for us. Being who you were created to be, we need, to, we need the strength of aloneness once in a while. But do not run away. Help preserve. Help enrich. Help heal. Help cleanse. It brings peace to you and the people around you.
service and confession of our faith, found in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He ascended into the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the union of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Freed by God in Christ to live and love and serve, we pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's beloved creation. Gracious God, you gather together people of faith in every time and every place to be your risen body in the world. Enliven the church to nourish its members, to love the earth, and to serve its neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, Creative God, you weave together the fabric of the universe, forests and fields. Give us wisdom and discernment to be good stewards of, you, of our resources. Lord, in your mercy. Sovereign God, you bless people with intelligence and compassion. Inspire citizens to rise up, raise up good leaders who seek peace and reconciliation among nations and who long to repair the world. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, your house, you house the homeless, free the captives, and you heal the sick. Make our hands your hands in service to the stranger and to the friends. We lift up to you those who are in special need of healing or health. Today we lift to you Carl, John, Norma, Jean, Barry, Janelle, Jax, Betty, Art, Cindy, and Ben. Lord, in your mercy. Welcoming God, you have given us to each other in this congregation. Make us glad to receive those you send to us and ready to receive their unique gifts. Lord, in your mercy. In every time and place, you raise up witnesses who testify to your love and your tender mercy. We remember with thanksgiving all who have uh, made your word known to the world. Today, we especially lift up to you, Pastor E.C. Frankie, the former pastor of Zion Lutheran Church. Lord, in your mercy. Into your wide, embracing arms, God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your boundless mercy through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share that peace with one another. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
Let us pray. God of life, you give us these gifts of the earth, these resources of our life and our labor. Take them offered in thanksgiving and use them to set a table that will heal the whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed to be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory yours now and forever. Amen. For those who are able, please stand and receive the blessing. God, creator of all things, speaking reformation into being, Jesus Christ, Savior of the world, raising the dead, Holy Spirit, living voice, calling and enlightening the church, Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, sound the good news.